today we'll be doing cream and liquid blushes and I'm not gonna lie this is actually incredibly difficult for me this is my second time filming this video because the first time went so very badly and I know I need to go through them and get rid of the stuff that is too old that I'm not using because it has such a short shelf life compared to powder products so I am going to be completely ruthless with myself and if I'm not you guys have free reign to yell at me in the comments um, because I really really need to get this under control it's not like a crazy amount of product or I get, no, it is a crazy amount of product. And in anticipation of being that ruthless with myself, I'm actually, in addition to having my little bag of stuff to pass on and my project pen, I have a bag right here for all the stuff that I am going to throw away because it needs to be thrown away. All right, let's start. The Benefit Cha Cha Tint just recently got this. It was on sale, so I'm not throwing that out or passing it on just yet. The Lolly Tint, also by Benefit. I do really enjoy this. I think this wears particularly well during um, hot weather, whether you have oily skin or dry skin. Um, and it's a really unusual color, not something I really have in my collection, so I am going to keep that as well. Along similar lines, I do have the Sonia Kashuk Dewy, Looks, Dewy Luxe lip and cheek balm. It has a creamier texture than these guys and a completely messed up brush. Like I don't even know what happened to this guy. But it applies really nicely. It blends in really easily though it has a similar propensity to stain. So you just have to be fairly quick about it and it just stays looking really dewy on the skin. So I'm going to keep that. I also have the Lise Wetier. This is the Blush Creme Satin Coral Paradise which I used in a recent get ready with me slash tutorial. And I do like this a lot and it's fairly new and it's a very flattering color on me so I am going to keep it. The Mark Just Pinched. These are old. Like easily a few years old. I'm not going to even bother opening them. I know that they have to go. So first one in guys, it's happening. Next up is the Tarte Flush Cheek Stain. This is the same shade, just different packaging because this is older. So much older that I feel like it's actually gone a little bit sludgy. And having read uh, Brightest Bulb in the Box, her blog post on her disease-ridden um, tart cheek stain. I'm not even gonna try to justify keeping this. This one's just gonna get thrown out. This one is very new though. I just got it um, a few weeks ago. It still has the top on it. I don't like the formula of this on myself and um, I'm gonna pass it on because of that. I find that it's a very nice surf sheer and translucent finish that looks very natural but I just don't enjoy the stickiness that it leaves on my cheeks so that one's gonna go in the pass along. Next up is the Josie Marin Coconut Watercolor Cheek Gelée. These guys I bought because I was hoping that they would be something similar to the Tarte in that they would be very kind of sheer and translucent but without that sticky finish. I haven't tried them out yet so I am going to keep them. These are the little mini sizes which I thought was a really cute idea because especially for cream products you don't want to necessarily overcommit to something that you're not going to be able to finish. I wish more brands did mini versions of these guys. The Benefit Benetent, this was also in one of those like sampler packs and I just don't use it so I'm going to pass that on. Alright, this next part here is where I start to have heart palpitations because I know I have to throw this out. I have to. These products are absolutely lovely. I adore the finish of these. They don't make these anymore because they are absolutely impossible for the average person to finish up within a reasonable length of time. They are just so pigmented and the amount of product in here is so large for the amount that you actually have to use that it will for sure go bad before you end up using it unless you're a hardcore makeup addict or a makeup artist using this on a daily basis. So it's super wasteful and the product at this point is just like this... Like what is this? <laughs> what the hell is this? I can't even. Um, so yeah, I have to throw this out and my heart hurts because it's such a waste, but I gotta do it. There's no point keeping this I'm going. Oh, palpitation. More palpitations. And now I feel like I need to have like a nap or a lie down or something, but I'm going to force myself to go through the rest of this because I already filmed it once. I don't want to do it again. So these are the Makeup Forever HD, the new version of them, and far more reasonable size. I do really, really like these. They have a very firm, slightly silicone-y, kind of creamy texture that dries down matte but seamless, like not powdery on the skin, not obvious at all. They can be shirred out, they can be built up. They are amazing, and if you're looking for a cream blush product and you're looking for this price range, I would definitely consider giving these a go. So I'm going to keep those. 
Next up from the drugstore, the Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blushes. I do really enjoy these a lot. I think a lot of people don't because maybe they're expecting the pigmentation to match up with the color that's in the pan, but they just go on way more sheer, which is what I like about them. I feel like they're kind of, you know, idiot proof. You would have a hard time messing these up and they have a very beautiful natural glow to them without being shimmery. So I quite like these. I mean, I took one with me on vacation and I definitely would consider doing that because I just think they look quite lovely on tanned and that sort of like healthy glowy skin that you get when you go on vacation. So definitely keeping these. Another drugstore cream blush that I recently purchased and I'm really enjoying is the Revlon cream blushes. Um, I find that their older cream blushes had more of a texture similar to this where it had kind of a more dry consistency going on. These ones feel a lot more emollient in the pan, a little bit more silicone-y. They do dry um, to a similar kind of not powdery but still kind of semi-satin finish. And they are a little bit more sheer than the Makeup Forever, though the colors themselves are quite uh, strong in the pan. And I just find that they're quite idiot-proof. Like, this color especially is just amazing. I think it's Charmed or Flush. I'm not sure because I feel like I swapped the lids at some point and I can't remember which one was which. But basically the more movie looking one, it's just the perfect, your natural flush kind of color. So I definitely would recommend these and I'm definitely keeping them. I just recently got the Bourjois Cream Blushes. They're not even opened yet, so I'm just going to put that in my to try pile. And then the Shu Amura Cream Blushes. These were part of a collection a little while ago, and I quite enjoyed these. I was really surprised. They have kind of a slippy powder, but not kind of texture when you dip your finger into them. And they go on relatively sheer with a soft kind of glowy finish that stays glowy, but again, isn't shimmery. And I just find them really flattering. Normally, I would never in a million years wear an orange like this. It's just not my kind of color, but I find it just looks super flattering, again, because I think of that sheerness and that gluey finish. So definitely like these, and we'll keep them. Next up is the Rimmel Stay Blush. These are really cute. I like these a lot. And for six bucks at the drugstore, definitely worth a look. They have um, not quite a gel-like consistency. They're sort of in between a cream and a gel very natural, easily sheared out, super hard to mess up. If you are new to cream blushes and you just want to try something and you don't want to spend a ton of money, I definitely recommend these. I really, really like them. Also on the very natural end of the spectrum, the Clinique Chubby Stick. Again, just recently tried this. It has a much more emollient finish and that stays looking fairly dewy on the skin. This does not last super long on my skin. Uh, if you have oilier skin, I think this was definitely a pass. If you have drier skin, this might be an option, but it just looks super natural and very flattering. And I don't mind actually reapplying it because it's so portable to begin with. Like you just put this into your bag. You don't have to worry about creams or liquids spilling anywhere. You don't have to take a sip or brush with you the way you would with a powder. So I think it's actually very travel friendly and very usable. As long as you like an emollient type finish and you don't mind reapplying it and you prefer something that's more sheer, then this is a good option. If you're like none of those things, then give this a pass because you will not be happy with it. All right, the NARS Orgasm um, Multiple. I think I used this once. I find it's way too shimmery and sparkly. I just don't like the texture either. It's like really slippery, but kind of almost like greasy feeling. I don't enjoy this at all, so it's gonna definitely go into my pass along pile. The Kevin O'Quay, uh, the Creamy Glow. This is, I think, in the older packaging. I think they've changed the packaging since. Super, super flattering color. I think this is one that's everyone's favorite. It has more of an emollient texture and feel. Doesn't stay too moist looking on the skin, but it's not a sort of powdery finish uh, type of cream blush. I do enjoy that for the variety. Um, I am definitely gonna keep this. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum in terms of texture, not price, is the Chanel. These have a really bizarre texture. They feel almost like velvet, kind of like a powder as you're touching it, even though they're clearly a cream product. And they have that, again, you know, matte finish that still looks very seamless on the skin. I think they're a really good option if you have oilier skin. If you have drier skin, you might not like the finish so much, but definitely keeping this. All right, this next part I feel is going to be a little bit easier because I know for a fact that some of these have probably gone off. Uh, a couple of them are more recent. A couple of them are quite a few years old, so I'm just going to smell and test them. And crayons. That's a pass. Throwing that out. That's usually a good gauge if something's gone off, if the smell changes. Yep, crayons. 
That one's good. That one's with the more recent one. I think this one's more recent too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that one still smells good. And then I think this one's probably, yep, crayons. Off you go. These are neat too. There's no Inglot store in Montreal anymore, unfortunately, so I can't even buy any more of these. But if you're in Toronto, I think there's one that's opening in your area. Again, more of that kind of initially emollient texture, dries to like a demi satin finish, super pigmented as you can see, can be sheared out very easily though, a little bit trickier to work with I think because of that pigmentation, but they're really nice, I do like them. And then the Clarence Cream Blushes, that felt like a tongue twister. This, I got one of these as a press sample and then I bought two others immediately afterwards as soon as I could find my, them at the uh, Clarence Warehouse sale. These are very natural, they're very sheer, you're not going to have a ton of pigment coming off of these, but that actually makes them super easy to use. And again, that silicone to kind of dry touch finish. So I am keeping those. Okay, the Smashbox Skin Tints. These I know for a fact are a couple of years old because I think Smashbox discontinued them in like 2012, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to small test them. Mm, that one doesn't seem to have changed, but I feel like I almost never wear this shade. So I think I'm going to put actually all of them in my project pan, not because I expect to use them up, but because they're a little bit older, I feel like I need to use them a little bit just to gauge whether they're still okay or not. And then depending on how I feel about them, they're either going to stay in my project pan or they're going to be thrown into the trash. All right, next up is the Elamasca Cream Blushes. Again, I picked these up because, you know, Elamasca's leaving and I'm courting like a crazy person, so these are not used yet. Another MAC Pro product, this one I got because it looks like it might have a nice combination of shades for either blushes, concealers, contour, and I really just need to play around with this a little bit more, so I'm keeping that. The Flower Cream Blushes, wow, I got these a little while ago, but I don't think I've ever used them. They've been just kind of like hiding in my collection, and wow, I can't open this apparently. Oh, there we go. That's simple. So yeah, these are completely unused, so I'm going to keep them in my need-to-be-tried pile. The Maybelline Master Glaze, uh, these... I'm not sure I'm crazy about the texture. It has kind of a very slippy, silicone-y feel, um, but I do like it a lot better than the NARS, though I think that's probably the closest comparison I would make for these. And this one is quite shimmery, so I feel like I don't use it because I don't really like that on my cheeks because I have, you know, the lines of certain maturity, so I don't want to emphasize that by having like sparkly things all over them. So I think I'm going to pass this one along. These two I haven't even tried yet, so I'm going to try them first because I feel like this one's actually a little bit less sparkly. That one might work out better. All right, the Stila Convertible Colors. These are obviously along the more emollient side of things. They stay kind of dewy on the skin. This one I never used, so I pass that on. This is the Peony. I do like this. I use it. It's a very natural color on me, so I'm going to keep that. These I think are unused entirely, so I'm going to keep that for now. The Orchid too, I think. Yeah. All right, these are some of my older ones, and I feel like they're probably need to be thrown out. Oh my gosh, yeah, that is pretty gross. That is Lilium, and it is going away. And then Gerbera, I don't think is. Yeah, that one's pretty old, though. I think I'm just gonna toss that one. Okay, last bin. So the Dream Mousse Blush from Maybelline. This one I got at. A L'Oreal sale a couple years ago. I never wear these. These are way too sparkly um, on the skin. Like, I don't think it's going to necessarily pick up here, but there's like a ton of like, like actual glitter in here. So now I'm going to just, I think, throw these out at this point because they're a couple years old. They were like a dollar or two. I don't feel like it's wasteful to throw them out at this point. And then I have the Lancome Magic Blush. I have to admit that I hoard these like crazy. I do love the finish this gives. I don't have a ton of like moussey blushes. And I just love the way this looks on the skin. All of these are kind of very softly glowy without necessarily having a lot of shimmer. And they just blend really beautifully and last forever. These are some of the like the longest lasting cream blushes I own. So I'm definitely gonna keep these guys. And then I have the Graftobian palette. This one I bought again for my kit. I've tried it a few times. I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to keep it or not. It does read a lot better on the skin, 
both close up and on camera than the foundation did. I find it just sinks in and looks a lot more integrated with the skin. And I actually do like the concept of this as a travel palette because it has such a nice range of colors. The only thing is because of that creamy texture, I don't feel like it would necessarily travel well, at least to the places where I like to travel, which is down south. So I'm still kind of on the fence as to whether to keep this or not. I think I'm going to put that into my project pan just to remind me to use it a couple more times. And then if I don't see myself really using it, I'm going to sell it. Okay, so I'm going to put all this stuff together into the proper binage and show you guys how I organize everything. But first, let's do a little bit of inventory here. So these guys are not so much project pans, but need to try again soon. I have a few things that I'm giving away, not a ton, but way more stuff that's going to go in the trash, like way more. <laughs> so yeah, this was kind of a bit of a sad <laughs> decluttering for me, but I think I feel a lot better about the things that I've decided to keep and that I'm going to be able to get use out of. And then this is how the drawer got organized. I didn't really do it so much thematically this time around. I really kind of did it more by the size of the products and the containers, having everything color up as much as possible so that if I was looking for a particular kind of product or a particular kind of color, I would have a really fast sort of way of visually identifying what I was looking for. So yeah, I think that is definitely a lot more streamlined than what I had before. I can actually see all the products as opposed to like a jumble of stuff. So yeah, I feel this went a lot better the second time around than the first time where I may have been curling up on the floor in fetal position crying. So we're just going to leave it at that and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.